Hello children, welcome back to School Readiness Program Session 4. Hope all are safe and happy. Yes. Shall we go to today's session? Yes. Huh? Yes. What will be the first class of today? Any idea? Shall we move to today's topic? No. Why? Yes. Assignment. Very good. I think all of you have completed your assignment. Let us recall our assignment and check your answers. Okay? Recall assignment and check your answers. You were given two assignments last time. What was it? One was about transformation of sentence and the other was about conditionals. So, assignment 1 will see what are the questions and how did you write the answers. Shall we move? Yes. Wait here till my arrival. You were asked to transform this simple sentence to complex. Correct? Did you write the answer? Yes. Wait here till I arrive. I think most of you have written correct. Yes. Good. The next question is, tell me what you require. Complex to simple. The answer is, tell me your requirements. Third one is, he is poor but he is honest. You were asked to transform compound to complex. Answer is, although he is poor, he is honest. Yes. Shall we move to the second assignment? Yes. Assignment 2 is on conditionals. So, you were supposed to write conditional 1, conditional 2 and conditional 3. Let us see conditional 1. It rains tomorrow, he stay at home. What will be the answer for this? Yes, correct. If it rains tomorrow, he will stay at home. I think you wrote correct? Yes. The second conditional. I nor like it nor eat it. How do you convert this? Let's see. If I didn't like it, I would not eat it. Third conditional is, the secretary cancelled meeting last night. No one blame him. If the secretary had cancelled the meeting last night, no one would have blamed him. Yes. Hope all of you wrote the answers correct. Check your answers. Okay. So, let's resume back to the session of today's. The first topic of today is direct and indirect speech. Yes. What is direct and indirect speech? Direct speech is used when the words spoken or written down are actual words spoken by some person as. He said, it is raining today. So, when your teacher asks you to get your pencil box or get your log book or get your scrapbook tomorrow, otherwise I will not let you to sit in the class. How will you go and report to your parent? Mama, you are not supposed to sit in the class if you don't bring the pencil box or a scrapbook. My ma'am told. Will you say this? Yes, one way it is correct. But you can't say the actual spoken words there. There is some slight changes there. You are going to report it how the teacher has spoken to you. Right? This is an example what happens in the classroom. So here I have brought you. He said it is raining today. How will it be reported? Let us see first what is indirect speech. Then we will move to the example. Indirect speech is reported. 
and it is used when a person reports direct speech that is he reports orally or writes down the words in an appropriate tense and refers to the original speaks or writes in the third person making other necessary change as that is as i told you when your teacher is telling you to get the scrap book or to get the pencil box or whatever it is she asks you to bring you are going to tell that you are going to report it at home isn't it tomorrow when you are coming you are supposed to bring that you are going to report it to your parent the same thing here he said that it was raining that day right he said that it was raining that day got it remember in reported speech make sure of the following points this has to be remembered when you are reporting something who is being reported and the time of reporting this makes good sense in a reported speech let us see how it is applied here tense changes is very important after a reporting verb in a present or a future tense of the verb in the reported speech does not change like what he is trying to tell you can you see this image he is telling something to us right what is he telling he says i am clever how will you report it in reported it says he says that he is clever right he is telling you are reporting to somebody as soon as you saw this image what did you understand he is keeping a pencil in his hand and one side a paper i am clever how will you report it to others he says that he is clever after reporting verb in a past tense the tense of the actual statement also goes into the past usually one tense here present simple becomes past simple let's see how like what do you see this boy is walking right i go for walk every day he said how will you report it he said that he went for a walk every day you are reporting it to somebody what he spoke the present continuous becomes past continuous how i am going for a walk here the sentence is in a present continuous i am going for a walk now he said how will you report it he said that he is going for a walk then when then remember the present continuous becomes past continuous present perfect becomes past perfect how i have walked for 1 hour he said here you have you see here i have walked for 1 hour he said how will you report it he said that he had walked for 1 hour got it so there is an universal truth here what is this universal truth if the reported speech relates to some universal truth the present simple in the reported speech remains unchanged how direct speech here is he said the earth moves round the sun right when you say it indirect this is a universal truth here he said that the earth moves round the sun you can't change it can you see the second part of the sentence is not changed he said that only that has been added here he said that the earth moves round the sun this is quite interesting next reporting verbs the common reporting verbs are say and tell let us see how say and tell say and tell works on reporting speech tell always needs a personal object when you are telling something i tell to you personal object i tell something i tell about something or i tell to someone personally you need a personal object so like for example you tell something to someone let it be anything you tell something to someone particularly you are telling something to someone you say that something has happened you tell someone that something has happened you are not particular you are telling someone you say that something has happened you tell someone that something has happened isn't it you also tell in the sense of order when you tell someone to do something isn't it who tells 
can you see who is this? He is a principal. Yeah, what is he telling? The principal told them to be punctual. What is the principal telling? He is telling to be punctual. Now, let us see how direct and indirect speech works on statements, interrogatives or questions, imperatives and exclamation. So, first let us see in statements. Statements in the indirect speech are generally introduced by the conjunction. Here, example is, she said there was a storm last night. Let us see how it has been converted. She said that there was a storm the previous night. Yes? Yes. Did you understand? Yes. Questions. To change a question from direct to indirect speech, you have to change the reporting verb to ask to asked, enquire to enquired, demand to demanded, want to wanted etc. Let us see how we can change. He said to us, are you going to school? This is a question, right? Let us see how it has been reported in direct speech. He inquired, he inquired of us whether we are going to school. Now, commands and requests, this is all about imperatives. In reporting, or command or a request in the indirect speech, the introductory verb is changed into order, command, advise, threaten, tell, ask, request, beg, implore, entreat, etc. Let us see the example. The verb in the reported speech is put in the infinitive. So, you do not have a particular person to tell. Culprit is not there, is there is no only one culprit in the world. So, when you say punish the culprit, so whoever has done the mistake, whoever is a culprit there, they are supposed to be punished, right? Said the captain. So, how was he trying to tell? The captain ordered them to punish the culprit. What do you see here? Someone is smoking, right? and there is no to smoking here. How will you say? He said to them, do not smoke here. How will this be reported? He forbade them to smoke there. That is, he is asking, he is requesting them not to smoke here. Right? Yes. Exclamation and wishes. In reporting exclamation and wishes, the reported speech is introduced by such verbs as wish, bless, Pray, cry, explain, declare, etc. Such phrases as with regret, with delight, with sorrow, etc. Let's see how it is used. The interjection and exclamation such as oh, well, hooray, alas, bravo, etc. are omitted and their sense is explained by means of phrases. Like, goodness me, I am tired, he said. How will he report it? He exclaimed that he was tired. Got it? What a lovely dress, she said. She remarked that it was a lovely dress. Let's practice. Direct. He said, I shall do for my best tomorrow. How will he report it? He said that, he would do his best the following day. She said to me what I was reading. She asked me what I was reading. He said to me, may God bless you. He prayed that God might bless me. He said, how do you get such a solution? He asked me, that is how is there, isn't it? He asked me how I got such a solution. So, now let's sit back and watch a small video about active and passive voice.
you inside. Fed you. And fed you again. And again. Master Happy was the tribe's very reason for existence.
hope you enjoyed this video. Yes. Now let's move to active and passive voice. Active and passive voice. Active and passive voice refer to the form of a verb. In the active voice, the subject of the verb is the person or thing doing the action. What is this image telling us? Yes, correct. Someone is cooking. Navin cooked the food. So, in the passive voice, action is done to the subject. The food was cooked by Navin. Isn't it? Passive voice occurs very commonly in English. It is not merely attentive to the active voice but had its own distinctive uses. How? Forms of passive voice. Passive verbs can be formed in the following ways. A tense of to be past participle. Like in active, he washes or has washed, will wash the clothes. He is or was washing the clothes. In passive, the clothes are or have been or will be washed by him. The clothes are or were, been, were being washed by him. Model plus be or have been plus past participle. Now see here, active. He may wash or have washed the clothes. In passive, you see, the clothes may be or have been washed by him. So, we have used a model here, right? Infinitive to be or to have been plus past participle. You can see active here. He is or was to wash the clothes. In passive, the clothes are to be or were to have been washed by him. Yes. Now, how is active and passive in transitive and intransitive verbs? Passive voice occurs only with the verb used transitively. That is, verbs that can be followed by an object. How? In active, someone beat him yesterday. In passive, he was beaten by someone yesterday. Many verbs can be used transitively or intransitively. How? The door opened perhaps by itself or someone is opening the door or someone opened the door. The door was opened perhaps by someone. Direct and indirect objects. Here you see verbs like give and bring which can have two passive forms. How? Inactive, he gave her, that is indirect object. A pen is a direct object. Passive, she was given a pen by him. A pen was given to her by him. Uses of passive voice. Spontaneous and deliberate use of the passive voice. In fluent English, passive forms occur naturally and spontaneously. Active equivalence. Now, few sentences are very difficult to make passive. Now, active equivalence are here would be hard to use for sentence like this. Here, it is very difficult to change it into passive. So, few sentences are there in English. You can't, it is very difficult to change. Like this sentence, Rome was not built in a day. Right? Passive voice for focus. We use passive voice when we wish to focus on a happening which is more important to us than who or what causes the happening or when there is simply no need to mention the doer. Now see here, our roof was damaged in the storm. Now you are thinking the only the roof that is literally our roof was damaged. We are concerned with our roof and what happened to it but the actual meaning here is the atmosphere is polluted, right? Passive voice is used when the subject is an indefinite pronoun like one. Like here, see here. The form has to be signed. You don't have a definite person. There is not one person to sign this form. Maybe many, maybe hundred, maybe thousand, maybe two hundred, maybe countless. 
So, you can't say that one person, one particular person can sign this form. Here, passive voice is obligatory in notices. You can't change in notices like loans arranged, shoes repaired, entry prohibited, isn't it? Let's practice now. Three men are loading the cart. Can you see three men are loading the cart? In passive form, the cart is loaded by three men. Yes? Next, what she's trying to tell? Oh no! Alas, we shall hear his voice no more. Here, alas, his voice will be no more heard by us as a passive voice. He will be elected secretary by the group. The group will elect him as a secretary. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this session. The link for the post test of the bridge course will be posted in this session. Please try to link on it and proceed the further.